This year, I was ready to dive into the holidays, starting with Diwali, our celebration of light done around the world. And thinking ahead, I was imagining the soothing sounds of the sitar, accompanied by the rooting rhythm of the tabla drum, dancers crossing our stage as they do with graceful turns and dips, and the flow of folks lighting earthen dia candles. I said, Kristen, it feels like a special Diwali to me this fall, and I know right now so many of us have a need for light, wisdom, and love to prevail over darkness, ignorance, and hatred. I, I can't wait. And Chris said, honey, you realize that on the weekend of Diwali, we're going to be in New Hampshire at my niece Rebecca's wedding. Uh, I said, she said, remember, we talked about that. I said, what? <laughs> no, we, I, I, the wedding and Diwali are on the same weekend. We can't go to Diwali this year. Uh, and so, but of course, our niece's wedding was truly lovely up in New Hampshire, and I was very disappointed. I was really bummed out to miss our Diwali celebration this year. I did not want to be away. Over Thanksgiving weekend, we were down in Maryland with Kristen's mother, a time filled with blessings. We had great conversations and a lovely meal in my mother-in-law's new retirement village. It was our first holiday there with her. And while down in the D.C. area, we also arranged to finally get together with some friends whom we had not seen since the funeral of a dear friend of mine's mother. We organized a picnic, play date for our day after Thanksgiving on the gorgeous, well-appointed playground of the National Cathedral. If you get a chance and if you have kids, this playground is unbelievable. So we had warmly baked bagels and lox and cream cheese and fresh fruit and freshly squeezed orange juice. And then on the playground, my friend of 25 years, Jeff, and his toddler, Sabino, have climbed up together about 15 feet high in a fort, and they're crossing over a rope bridge. And out of nowhere, the toddler vomits all over, and it... <laughs> It goes directly 15 feet down on his brother, <laughs> who is standing below him. Could have been, Sylvester could have been anywhere, but he's directly below his brother at this time. And this began the process of ending the Thanksgiving picnic earlier than anticipated. <laughs> okay. The holidays do not always conform to hopes and expectations. <laughs> the, tightly, uh, the tightly wrapped gift with lace ribbons shows a tear. The plan that's been in place for weeks to meet a friend for tea and cakes at a lovely hotel gets canceled because somebody gets a nasty flu. During the holidays, when things become a mess, we usually have two choices. We can either curse the mess or we can bless the mess. And most of the times, it's better to bless the mess. Embrace imperfections. Don't strain to make things ideal. I have a friend who grew up evangelical Christian, and when things go wrong, sometimes my friend, I love it, he says, I am not going to let the devil steal my joy. And one time I asked him, I said, I said, do you believe in the devil? And he said, no, personally I don't. And I said, okay, so, so what do you mean when you say that, that you're not gonna let the devil steal your joy? And he said, well for me primarily it means I'm just not gonna allow my own perfectionism or, or greed or jealousy ruin a good thing or just a, bad, a day of bad luck. Many times it means, he says, I'm gonna focus on the positive rather than giving too much power to the negative voices inside of me. I said, well, right on, man. Then I am not going to let the devil, if that's what it means, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy either. 
especially at the holidays, try and let the angels of our better nature bless the mess, including inside of myself. The holidays are never perfect, so don't try and push and pull and make things ideal. Don't wrestle with every person, place, and thing in order to make them fit into the script of the movie you wrote and directed in your head of how the holidays should be. The should be holidays. So this year, here are Kent's three keys for during the holidays to bless the mess. Numero uno, embrace humor. When things go off script, many times there is laughter to be found. My friend's kid vomiting off the rope bridge onto his brother below was unfortunate and gross. Believe me, it was very gross. <laughs> Some vomits are not as gross. But it was, you know, also kind of funny. And, and we got that, packing up and leaving. In this church, uh, after a Halloween party, we often leave a few of the hand-carved jack-o'-lanterns up here on the chancel for people to enjoy for a couple weeks. This year, as some of you will remember, the days following Halloween were unseasonably warm. So November heat and humidity brought many pumpkins to rot faster than normal. I know some of you noticed this at your own house. Two weeks after Halloween, Mike Rogers and I were up here preparing for a wedding with a couple lovely ladies, and our, all of a sudden they point our attention to the fact that the pumpkins had not only rotted but some nasty pumpkin gunk juice was it like puddling across the chancel where they were gonna get married. So I was, I was embarrassed by the sanctuary appearance for a wedding, but we cleaned it up and eventually, you know, Mike and I get a big kick out of this and we, we laugh about the pumpkin gunk juice. You know, you can embrace those old your own humorous things, the holidays. Uh, you can do your funny holiday things, whether a holiday is going well or not. Um, and they might not be funny to anyone else. Personally, I've always, I don't know why I find this funny, but I always sing the songs from the classic Johnny Mathis Christmas album. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. <laughs> I'll be so blue thinking about you. Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree won't mean a thing if you're not here with me. You know, and, and if, if, I, if I'm the only one who laughs at it, it's worth it. I just get a smile on my face. And of course, it's also a little beauty because it makes me think of my mom putting on the album, the, you know, the album, and listening to it as we baked peanut brittle. Idea number two, even in the mess, find beauty and meaning anyway. Even in the mess, find beauty and meaning anyway. When we do get set about, upset about holiday mess, it's because in many ways the holidays do matter. If the holidays never had any potential for beauty and meaning, none of us would care about them anyway. So sing those old songs to give yourself a smile, feel the beauty, walk down memory lane, some meaningful experience you have. Imperfect as they are, the holidays are holy days and times to celebrate the birth of goodness, the returning of light. People around the globe have been pausing to celebrate holidays and holy days for centuries. We're in that tradition of remembering the light is in us and in others. And we pause and do things. We're more aware and we kindle it. It works. So even when things go off track, just pause. Breathe, do a reboot. 
we can see the beauty of the children practicing for our Christmas play, the greening of the sanctuary next week, the choir holiday service next week. You can come out and sing on, on New Year's Eve with shape notes singing. Take a walk in the Wissahickon by yourself or with your dog or with your friend and just pause and say, this is holiday beauty for me right now. Drive around and look at the light displays. That might be a little funny, a little beautiful. People put those up with love. Those light displays that burn a lot of electricity <laughs> and probably are not good for global warming in some way, but they're beautiful. I love them, you know? And enjoy the eagles, people, the 10 and 1 eagles. Let me tell you something. There's one thing I want you to know about the eagles if you're not a big football fan the best defensive line in football. Not everybody's aware of that. Enjoy that defensive line, people. The seven-man rotating defensive line. That's holiday, that's holiday fun. Number three, when the mess hits, be creative in blessing it. Breathe and wait. Go to plan B. If that fails, go to plan C. If that fails, go to plan D. Don't give up. A holiday season spent you know, one of those plans is going to need to include helping others, probably, because a holiday season spent without helping others is usually more dry, less satisfying. A couple of years ago, Phyllis was going through her second holiday season after her divorce. The first holiday season after divorce had been less than satisfying. Too often, Phyllis found herself anxious about which family event to attend or not. When Phyllis was brave enough to be honest and it was tough, too often she felt left out of activities she deeply learned, yearned to participate in. And of course Phyllis knew that the challenge of the holidays was just one version of her struggles in writing new chapters in her, in her life. This was tough stuff. With the help of a good therapist, her church, conversations with some friends, Phyllis decided that in year two of her holidays, she would chart a new way. Knowing that many people had set schedules and traditions on the main holiday days, like Thursday of Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, Phyllis picked a Sunday evening in December to invite over a group of friends. And she knew that at least a couple of these friends might also be longing in their own lives to start a new holiday chapter. So she planned the meal, decided not to try to achieve the culinary level of a five-star restaurant, but she did prepare and cook and bake with lots of heart and care. She baked a gorgeous ham, which was crispy outside, tender in. She made her mother's green bean casserole with crunchy onions on top. That meant a lot to her because she'd been eating it since she was little. She made tasty au gratin potatoes with more butter than she could tell anybody. And the meal was truly delicious, especially because her friends felt the love of the cooking. The guest faces beamed with warmth and gratitude. So near the end of the evening, the folks are gathering up their coats for leaving and Phyllis decides to ceremonially, ceremoniously blow out the taper candles. But she inadvertently blows hot candle wax all over the tablecloth and one remaining food dish. <laughs> and for whatever reason, she's mortified by this. Her friends notice her embarrassment and try to console by reiterating how special the night has been. And Phyllis puts on a strong face, gives the warm goodbye, but she's distracted by a wax incident. After the last guest leaves, Phyllis is annoyed with herself for ending the evening in such an unpolished manner in her mind. 
And she goes back into the dining room to clear some final glasses on the table, and she looks at this Jackson Pollock-like spread of wax, and she breaks out laughing. She says, she thinks to herself, it's pretty humorous that I could not have made more of a mess blowing out these candles if I had practiced five times this week. <laughs> Blessings and mess. Blessings and mess. With this dynamic, the holidays are so much like the rest of our lives, 12 months of the year. Nobody is ever immune from mess, including big mess, grieving the loss of a loved one, separation, addiction, abuse, neglect, all these things, and little messes. And everybody, being, knowing we're all vulnerable to the mess, we all also have the power to bless within the mess. Patricia Livingston is a writer who said, life is about living in the balance of the unbalanced, the imperfect, the never finished, never totally secure, never totally happily, never happily ever after, forever. We have such a longing to have everything in order, under control, to have everyone we love healthy and safe, and that is not a state that ever lasts. We have to learn to live with mess. We have to learn to bless the mess, bless in the mess. Embrace humor, find beauty and meaning, be creative, be grateful for those fragments of holiness that don't last very long, and help others. Even in the mess, especially in the mess, pay attention and give thanks. As the colors, tunes, and perfumes pour in endless cascades in the abounding joy that scatters and gives up and dies every moment. People and friends of USG, I love you, the people of this church, so much. Happy holidays to you. <laughs>